Well, hello again, ladies and gentlemen. This is your friend, No Way. In this video, to be seen worthy. There's many meanings behind being seen worthy. Um, government, and what do, does government see you or deem you worthy of of their acceptance? No government never will. You are nothing more than a government's meal ticket. That's what they see you as. You are, or as Bill Gates calls us, worthless eaters. We are to be exploited, lied to, used, abused, and thrown away when our usefulness is no longer acceptable. But still we go through our lives seeking everybody's approval. We want our parents' approval. We want our children's approval. We want everything in our world to see us as worthy. And this is where the problem arises. When you're seeking other people's approval to be deemed worthy, then you're, you're losing a big part of your soul. And what would I mean by that? Well, for people that, like even me here, doing videos online, I have a message and I bring that message. And that's it. If somebody cares to listen to it, great. If they don't, it doesn't matter. It's of no consequence. But I see many people out there today, their lives are being destroyed only because they are seeking something that they can't find. They're looking for approval of these people they've met online or they, they go to their chat rooms or they go to their live streams and they're leaving comments in people's videos and they're, they're seeking approval. Now don't get me wrong. There's a lot of great, wonderful people out there and they give their opinion on people's videos and, and that's fine. That is fine because that is communicating, that's, that's fellowship amongst God's people. Now, the only approval, me, I'm a 59-year-old man. I, I don't look for, for much uh, approval from this world anymore. I've been there, done that, and, and I've moved on from that. Now it's the only, like I've, I've always said a, a lot of times, the only approval that I'm looking for and thriving in my life at this point is God's approval. The Son, Jesus Christ. Does Jesus Christ deem me worthy? That's it. That's what matters. So, seeking that approval from Jesus Christ, from God, that's going to be based on my actions, how I treat nature, how I treat other people, how I treat any living thing in this world how I treat my children, how I treat my wife. And that's what you're, you're being judged upon. Now, let me give you this little story. They say, and many people say, that you are judged in the afterlife how you were and what you were on living 
when you were on this earth. So, this politician, he dies. He comes before Jesus. And Jesus says, well, you are going to have a choice. You are going to spend 24 hours in heaven and you are going to spend 24 hours in hell. After these 48 hours, you make your own choice of where you want to be sent. Politician, wow, I never knew it would be this way. Sure, okay, I agree. So Jesus says, all right, where do you want to go first? He said, well, uh, I want to go to hell. I want to go down and just see how bad it is and see if it's like anything I was told while I was in the land of the living. And Jesus says, okay. Poof. He finds himself in hell. Well, wow. He sees all of his friends that have passed away. And there's green grass and blue skies and they're all in fancy clothes and there's there's mansions everywhere that they live in and oh they're playing golf and they're lazing around in the green grass and boy it's great here oh it's wonderful here we can enjoy this wonderful daylight and sunlight and the green grass it's beautiful here and, and we have our leisurely days all the time. It never rains. It, it's never cold. It's perfect temperature. Wow. And poof. The 24 hours were up. Jesus says, okay. Now, you have 24 hours in heaven. And poof. He finds himself in heaven. And gee, all the, the people are dressed in white robes and they're laying around in lawn chairs and and just leisurely enjoying their time in heaven. They, ah, would you like a cold glass of water? Sure, here you go. What would you like to eat? Here's your meal brought right to them. They, they appear. They're right there. there. There's no work. Everything is all taken care of. It's all done by, by God and Jesus. It, it just, everything is so perfect. And puff, the 24 hours are up. So now this politician finds himself standing back before Jesus. Okay, sir, now it's time for you to make your choice. Where would you like to spend eternity? I don't know. Heaven was so nice and laid back. But all my friends are, are, are down in, in, in hell and they have a beautiful life down there as well. And Oh, this is such a hard decision. But I think I want to spend eternity with my friends. I'd, I'd like to hang out with them and, and play games with them. And Jesus says, okay, poof. And he finds himself in hell. And oh, wow. There's no green grass. It's extremely hot. There's garbage and filth falling from the sky and all the mansions are are gone and there there's nowhere no beds, no nothing, there's no homes, there's and all of his friends are there and they're oh they're all in rags and they all smell and they got welts and sores all over them and their hair is all, he says, what happened? I was just here 24 hours ago. And, well, 
We were campaigning. Today you made your choice. So, the moral. You're seeking somebody's approval. They're going to tell you exactly what you want to hear. So you think they approve of what it is you're doing, of your choices. But for every choice we make in life, there is consequences. It doesn't matter if those consequences are good or bad, but there's consequences for every action that we take and every choice that we make while we are here on this earth in the living. Whatever we choose to believe, whatever we choose not to believe, whatever person we choose to listen to and accept what they're saying to us is the truth. Because the, the simple fact is our reality, every person's individual reality, is what they make it. It's what you choose to believe. So you better be careful. Because once you've made that choice, are you sure that person's not just campaigning? How many, how many times have you listened to a politician and believe that that politician was going to make your life better. You didn't think about other people's lives. You thought about your own. You wanted to be seen and deemed worthy to this politician. That this politician was going to make the decisions when they got elected and they got into office that was going to make your life better. But what you missed is that that politician was telling every single person the same thing. I am going to fight for you when I get in office. And the next person, I'm going to fight for you when I get in office. But everybody's idea of what their perfect life is, is different. Everybody's wants are different. Everybody's needs are different. There's only one entity in this world that tells you like it is. And will never lie to you. Will never lead you astray. And when you're making the wrong decision or the wrong choice in life, Jesus will let you know it's wrong. Your heart, that Holy Spirit living within your heart, right there, your heart. You know that the choices you're making are wrong. Your actions are wrong. So it's up to you to make the right choice. Not what somebody else has told you is right. Definitely not what a politician has told you is right. And what you need to do. Or the choices you need to make. Because remember. All these people doing evil in our world today. It is not our place. To demand that they be held accountable. Because God already tells us. He will hold them accountable. And as it says in Psalms, you, you're getting worn down and, and you're getting, but in Psalms it says, fret not for this is the closest to heaven these evildoers will ever be. They're creating their heaven right here on earth. They're, they're living right here today and they're actually making their heaven right here on earth this is the closest they're going to be 
these these politicians, these rich people, these Hollywood elitist and everything. This is the closest to heaven they'll ever be. Because what they're doing with the authority and the the wealth and stuff that God has allowed them to have is anything but godly. Some of these people think that they can live forever. And if you, you look at a lot of these people, you think, well, they're not being held accountable. Well, of course they are. Let's look at the Clintons. What has happened to them now? They're not winning anymore, are they? Society, the majority of society is seeing them for the evildoers that they are. And they no longer have that authority or that pull over people. And they, they're no longer the higher echelon that they once were. God has destroyed them. Look at Hillsong Church. We didn't have to do anything to destroy those blasphemers and those evildoers and those those people of filthy lucre because God tore them down himself. He exposed them for what they were. What is what is really disturbing now and really pulls at my heart are the people that put their faith in Hillsong Church and now have walked away and turned from God only because of the evil doings behind that church. And in my heart, I hope and I pray that these people find the truth once again, but they have to find the truth within themselves not within some sweet-talking, elaborate preacher or th this filth that we're seeing today that they're calling church and they're calling faith. Your faith is between you and God. Your salvation is between you and the Son, Jesus Christ. That's it. So, to be deemed worthy... It does not matter what any living soul on this earth has to say. It doesn't matter what politicians are doing. It doesn't matter what some corporation is doing. You don't need the best of everything. Because when you die, you can take nothing with you. The biggest testament before Jesus and before God and before believers is how much tribulation can evil put you through and you continue to keep your faith and trust in God. It doesn't matter what government does. Remember, render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and render unto God that which is God's. So, whatever the government demands of you, just do it. If the government wants you to commit sin, and tells you you have to commit sin, no that you can respectfully refuse. I will not commit this sin that you demand I must. If your church is surrendering their soul to, well, what's coming here in a couple days, and praising this month of June, then they have given themselves over to the evildoers. And they are committing sin before the eyes of God. 
and I would suggest that you pray for their salvation and find a new church find a new church find one that will do whatever the government wants the edicts from the state so to say but do not commit sin only because government demands you must you don't have to accept anything on this earth except for what is true and righteous all the rest turn your back on there's no need for violence for those that are faithful keep that faith but show that faith to other people so when other people see that it doesn't matter man the government's out to destroy this person why are they still happy and smiling why because on the other end they will be rewarded they may not see that reward here while they're alive on earth but they will have that reward when they die because they did not bow down to the depths of the evil that is in this world all these school systems and what they're doing and what they're pushing and how they're attacking the youth if the biggest no-no in life is you do not pervert the children you allow the children to be children and to grow up and you teach them properly that was the biggest lesson we had with Moses what happened with the Israelites when they came to the promised land which is modern day Israel Israel was not created in 1948 by the UN Israel was created by God over 3,000 years ago and anybody that doesn't accept that and can't accept that then they are mocking and denouncing God it's that simple and it's too bad because they will pay the ultimate price for that so lastly to end this video remember you only need to be deemed worthy by the son Jesus Christ that is it all the rest is immaterial. Do not commit sin. Stay righteous. And yes, treat others as you want to be treated. And for those that are not treating you well, shrug it off with a smile. But stay righteous and true to God. And you will be rewarded for it. So, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, this is no way out.